pass you straight over to him. Hi. Um, first of all, uh, sorry for my English. It's a little bit wash. Um, so I'm, I'm Jean Gabès. I'm a French system administrator near, uh, near Bordeaux and uh, nearly two, two years and, uh, on, on, on half. I start a, a project that is now thinking. Uh, the presentation uh, will be done with the help of Gert, Gert Loser, famous NGOs and monitoring consultant. Uh, and he is uh, the first fault to, to, form, to, to follow me uh, in this project. Okay. No, no, okay. What is Shinken? Shinken is a, 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 a Negios we watch from scratch. No code from Negios was, was used. This, uh, you can, it's, it's a monitoring tool like Negios. You can stop your Negios, start Shinken with the same configuration, the same plugins, the same web interface, and it will work. Keep this in, uh, in mind during the, the whole co uh, conference. We are just uh, getting more options, but we, we want to remove some if you are already using some with ne Negios. So, Shinken is quite a, a strange project. It was not start to be a whole project at all, in fact. Um, uh, near three years ago, I wrote a, a French book about ne Negios, and I, I saw some conceptual problems, mainly about uh, performances and the distributed architecture. I start to, to vote uh, some, some Python line of, of code to, to see if some technical uh, things can help to, uh, to get more, more performances. And uh, in fact, quite, uh, quite quickly, I've got really huge performances by launching um, checks. And with a little bit more works, it was uh, also very easy to, to build an efficient distributed architecture with it. But it was just a poke. So um, I take all these idea, ideas and I ask to the Negios uh, core developers if they um, were interested to, to get this and get all, uh, all of these back in, uh, in Negios code. There was no, no answers. So we, um, I, um, I continue to, to, to work on this, to, to, add, uh, to add new feature. And uh, after six months of, uh, of development, it was uh, more efficient to, to continue this project than to take all these new ideas and to yeah, uh, backport in the in the, say, in the say code. There was uh, main ideas like uh, process pools for enhanced performances and the uh, very uh, huge uh, distributed architecture that was very, very hard to, to backport in C. Uh, so we, we asked officially in the Nagios Devel branch, uh, in the Nagios Devel list, if we can have a, a development branch for, for Negios, so we can mix the C code on the Python one after maybe one year or two. Why not? But it was not uh, accepted. Why not? So we, we had to start our own, own project. It starts like a, a one mile show, but now it's, it's quite, uh, there's quite a uh, lot of uh, contributors. The first of one was Gerhard. He was full enough to, to follow me. And now we got uh, a lot of help. So uh, uh, 
I said that this, this code was in Python. And everyone will say, yes, Python is slow. Mm. Let's see. We will bench it. So uh, I took, uh, we will try to bench with the, uh, just the, the uh, pure, pure uh, check launch. You take the core, no uh, web interface, no database, just the core that launch checks. How many can they launch in five minutes? It's a, a quite standard server with check uh, with five minute intervals, no brokers, just the core, and we try to search the, the maximum number of services we can schedule before getting the latency to, to explode. So with Negus, we can reach uh, 30,000 uh, check in five minutes. Why not? Centrion Engine is a new fork from Negios, from uh, French, uh, French guys, from Meritis, that try to enhance Negios code. They failed. <laughs> Isenga, nearly like uh, Negios. No surprise. Shinken, quite better. So this no. was a uh, default Jenkin. Uh, it did not use all these uh, distributed features. It's just uh, one, uh, one, uh, one uh, monitoring node. Mm -hmm. So standalone Jenkin. Yeah. So yes, if if we did the same thing than the C code from Negios, we will be slower. But we don't. There is conceptual flow in the Negios code for loading checks. We remove them. We add uh, pull processes, and we get great performance. A little bit more me memory, but it's not really a problem. So uh, I also talk about the, the distributed architecture. In fact, uh, in, uh, in, in Negios, it's a daemon for all worlds. You've got all in one daemon. <coughs> In uh, Shinken, it's the opposite. Each world got its own daemon. Why not? Where it can be really efficient is when uh, you've got some pullers that will loan checks. You've got one, but you can add uh, two, three, or many as you want. The fact is you, you don't see daemon as the server, but diamonds are resources for your monitoring. You've got one big configuration, and Chinken will try to cut it in uh, n, uh, n uh, small configurations that will be sent to the n resources. If you've got more resources, it will cut into smaller parts and distribute it all over your, uh, your resources. It's like uh, a big cloud. Ah, one very important point. There is no central relational database. My day to, uh, to, to day work is to manage Linux, Windows Server, and Oracle ones. Uh, so uh, every day, I see that it just don't scale. It's, it's a nightmare. So in Shinken, there is, you don't need a central database. It's all in memory. We'll see how we can keep our data here. Of course, you can, the server can fail. You, there can be a bug and crash. You need high, avail high availability. In Shinken, we are using a, a Web5 type. You've got a uh, spare daemon, and you, 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 can, you can put if, if another one die, it, uh, the spare will take the, the job from the died one. That's quite simple, but very efficient. Uh, 
there is uh, something with the Nagios distributed architecture is the retention data. Retention data is uh, the demand that save downtimes, commands, acknowledgement. Uh, so you can still get this, this information after you, uh, you restart. If you uh, got a, um, a distributed architecture with high availability, you need to get the, this retention data always available for the, the spare demands that will need this data. If you save it to um, a flat file, you, the, the other server won't be able to, to load it, or you need to uh, an NFS server, but it's very slow. So you can still use for simple installation flat files, but you've got other options too, like a memcache or a ready server. So you will never lost your uh, retention data. And uh, in very big installations, it can be a problem when uh, traditional Lagos writes the mm -hmm. retention data. This is a blocking point. And if you have uh, thousands of uh, monitoring objects, mm -hmm. it takes uh, some time just to flush all this information to a file. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have a memcache or something, mm -hmm. it's uh, even faster because uh, there's no disk I.O. involved. And during the save, the check is still executed. There is one specific case for distributed architecture are the, the DMZ. In fact, uh, in most old architecture, you need to get connection from the DMZ to the LAN, like to insert in a, in a central database. Network admins don't want that. It's, it's a nightmare for, uh, for them. So in, in Schenken, you can just get LAN to DMZ connections. It's not a, it's not a problem. You can also put uh, a specific diamond that will listen to apps and NSCR command of this DMZ and just this. You don't need to get traps from the DMZ to your LAN. Your network uh, admins will be very happy. For the, the distributed uh, feature, there is, in fact, two levels of separations. You can see your, you can get uh, different big data centers so uh, each one will be quite independent from each other. Like uh, if you've got uh, a distant site in, uh, in China, it should be better to be independent. And you've got inland distribution, like for, for the DMZ uh, case. Uh, of course, you can use both in the, in the same time. So you've got uh, uh, a China data center, and in it, uh, a DMZ la LAN, you can uh, use both like you want. This is uh, an example. You've got only one big configuration for your, your whole uh, monitoring setup. The, the main um, diamond, the arbiter, will uh, take it and cut it into your N resources diamonds and then you will send it to your uh, diamonds. You can here, in fact, you can choose to aggregate all your notification and data from all your data center if you want. If you really want database, you can, of course. But you can get a, a, a live statue modules with a SWAC interface if you want. You will get all your data about all the world in one place. Um, uh, the real means uh, you can group uh, processes and daemons or resources mm -hmm. uh, into logical uh, uh, u u units which are isolated from each other. So you have, you have one configuration, but in fact you have uh, separate monitoring subsystems. Mm -hmm. And uh, the realm is also an attribute for uh, hosts uh, so this means when you have a host with uh, the realm attribute US, it will automatically be assigned to the US uh, sub-monitoring system. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, so you can control where are your hosts checked. Mm. And another example, if you don't want to aggregate all your data and notifications, it's, it's very, very, it's, it's just a, a two-line configuration change. This is the uh, VDMZ example. So um, you've got some, some diamonds here, like pros. You can say that uh, my host is in the DMZ, and so it will be checked by this pooler. And if there were more, it will be used by one of them. Not a problem, you can, you can have a spare here, of course. So it will launch checked, and the central uh, diamonds will give him uh, checks to do, and will get the, the results too. So your network connections is okay. And you can get a, a, a trap receiver, an NSR, NSA uh, diamond in this DMZ. All your traps will be sent to this one, and the central diamond will take all the traps and NSA commands and will hit them. So here again, good network connections. If you don't have already a, a Nedios or a Singa um, setup, you can use the, the discovery feature. It's, it's quite good to, to start with uh, already good configurations. It's, it's used um, Nmap and uh, VMware uh, data to, to create your, your host configuration with standard standard service like uh, HTTP, FTP, Linux, Windows, whatever you want, in fact. You've got a lot of, uh, lot of, of, of possibilities to, to create rules. You can say, if this port is open, I create this service. If this port or not this one is open, I create another one, if I want. So, this one for the purely technical part. It's, it's important for us, but in the end, the, the end users don't see it. They don't care about the a check to be, to be launched on the DMZ or not in VLAN. They don't care at all. So uh, let's try to see what is a, a 2D uh, IT need, what is a, a standard environment on what user want to see. You've got a, a class, classic setup with a distant site, firewalling <coughs> nearly everywhere, virtualization, availability, load balancing. You check from one point and your user are in another one point of view. With classic tools, it can be a, a real nightmare to to, to, to monitor. It's not a complex environment. It's today environment. You can't, you can't don't have this today. Your user needs high availability, huge performance. You need to get that. Your monitor system need to follow this. Another thing that your user wants you to do is to focus on the production servers and in really critical and users' applications. An admin will never run in its server room for a qualification servers down, of course, because some applications are more important than others. Production is, qualification is not. Your, uh, your mail service is important. Your, your little uh, development server is not. That quite, of course, but other tools don't do that. Because the IT is not important by itself. Applications are, end user applications are. IT is not. I love my servers. 
my switch. But it just switch and servers. It, it's not this that help end, end users. It's applications, not IT. So what is the importance of an IT problem? A server is down, and, and what? What is the problem? The problem is if this is a root problem of an important impact, like your mail server is down, this host down is now important. If it was a, a qualification environment, it was not. So, you can't say that a, a server is important before you know what can it can break. You just need, you, you need to know if your end user application are important or not. It's, it's, uh, it's quite efficient because you don't have a lot of end user application, but you have a lot of servers. So only tag important your end user applications. We'll see how just a, a little, bit, a little bit after. Your server uh, is down. It makes the mail unavailable to your end users. So no, this problem is important. It got uh, an important value an important business impact value. With it, you can, uh, you can now try to, to filter some, uh, some notifications with this data. If the server break qualifications environment, you maybe don't need to, to wake up the, the admins in, uh, in 3 a.m. But it, if it was a production server, it can be a good, a good idea. Of course, all applications are not important every time. Your paid, uh, your paid applications is only important three day a month. The rest of the time, it's a standard applications, not a big deal. So. Hmm? Uh, we are talking about, uh, from, a, from a technical view, uh, of a new uh, attribute which you can attach to your hosts and services. This is called business impact because uh, in a normal uh, Nagios environment, if your printer is out of paper, it's red. If your <coughs> company website is down, it's red. Uh, so uh, you need to know w which one is more important. So that's why this uh, new attribute was introduced just to uh, uh, help you uh, giving priority to things. <laughs> Uh, we will see in the, the, the web GUI later, GUI later mm -hmm. it can be used to sort things so that uh, the really important things uh, are shown up first. So you, and, and you can uh, even make uh, the less important things uh, invisible because mm -hmm. you, you just don't care about the out of paper. This is the example I was talking about. It's the night, your uh, network administrator is, is asleep, and one switch got a problem. It impacts the qualifications applications. Shinken will compute the uh, root problems importance, the root <coughs> problem business impact. It will be a uh, qualifications once, not important, no SMS sent, your network admin can, can still sleep. The same switch, but this time, a production application is down. Shinken will still compute the, the business impact importance of this with problems, and now it's the problem of, of the administrators. The notifications will we go through filter and the SMS will be sent.
there's one, one f specific users that need a lot of things. It's the uh, admin boss. He want to see, uh, he don't really care about IT. He just care about end user applications. It's his job to do this. <coughs> and he don't want to know that uh, a mail server is a pop free, IMAP, and uh, SMTP one with DNS entry. He don't care about this. All he want to know is, are my mails okay or not? That's all. You want to see one element for all of this. Your end users will want to see that too. It can be a good thing in the, in the big screens. For this, you will need to get aggregation from some states, some end users application tests uh, to, to aggregate uh, in one element with some standard rules n, or I need uh, at least n element, uh, some <coughs> advanced way for managing even the degraded state. So you will say, yes, there is business process add-on. Yes, yes. But it's not in the core. So if you do this in the in the, in the check part, you don't, you, you can't follow all the root problem impact analysis and the business impact tagging. You can't do this with just a, a check launch. You don't have all these informations. You can also do this in your web interface. But here again, you won't be able to filter your notifications. This is this must be in the core. It's, it's not a big deal to, 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 to undo a line of code, maybe. It's, it's really not a big deal. In Shinken, it's managed. It's just a, a, a check command that will be managed internally. It's, it's just a check command that said, I want this element and this one, or this one and another the check won't be executed. It will be it internally, and the state will be compute and update, that's all. It's quite efficient. It, you can still use your, your current um, configuration tool. It's just a check command. Can be useful for some specific network installation with active spare, uh, uh, active spare installations when you can got um, difficult relationship with uh, parents and dependencies. A sample example of these business rules. You've got a, a huge ERP, uh, ERP like Oracle. I've got, I need to manage. You need to got at least one database, one HTTP server, and one load balancer active. That's all. Your administrator see this. Your boss see this. That's all. They don't want to see every detail if there is no if there is no problems. <coughs> um, can you raise up your hand if you're using VMware? servers. Hmm. Can you raise up your hand if you configure the host dependencies between your host and your VM? No one? Okay. I don't do this too. Hmm? Host dependencies, not parents. In fact, if you got only one host dependency on one parent, it's the same. It's just an end or or rules. If USX don't matter, you, you don't need to go both. So I've got a lot of USX servers. I need this this dependencies. Why? If 
I've got a problem on uh, an ESX server. I don't want to get 200 of mails because just of one wood problem. I want to see this, not the whole impact. I want the correlations to be done. But of course, with the motions, it's quite hard to manage where the, the, the virtual machines are. We are moving them every day. It's, it's, not, it's not easy to do, of course. That's why Chinken got a module to, to help you. Chinken will, at start, will ask for all these links and will create all the <coughs> aggregated and um, high available. Of course, we didn't put a relational database in the whole architecture. It was not to put one in this part. It's still all in memory, of course. You can't manage a, a, a huge monitoring infrastructure with a central relational database. It, you can't. It will always be the, the performance bottleneck. So here, RAM is quite cheap. We are using it. It's a new web interface, so we, um, we use all that we can. It's new, new technologies of, of current browser. If you're going in this with uh, old Internet Explorer 1, you will get problems. Um, in nowadays, uh, web interface, there is too much, too much information. Most of them are, are useless. You, in general, you, you focus on the state, where, when the state was, was, was which, and one or two actions. But the, the latency check, the, the, the latency value, you, you, you are never looking at it. Why print it, hide it, and if the user wants, to show it, give it uh, a way to, to get it. It will be like um, um, the GNOME of the web interface. Of course, there are other web interfaces, like PNP for, for graph. We've got models to get graph in it, and in fact, we can link, link it with whatever UE we want with um, um, a module system in it. Very important, very important. I, I try with my own boss. He look at it, after 10 seconds, he take his iPad and use it. Great. In he, was, he, he understood that the, the mail server was done because uh, ex 61 was done. That's all that he needs to know. He don't want to, to get more information. It focus on what he wants. And the administrator in the other part gets far less elements print in their monitoring tools. So they are very, very happy. We'll get some uh, screenshots after, after this. Important too. Night shift operators. Um, sometimes they, they don't really know what is important. They can call an administrator. Oh, so if uh, the printer is low in toner, oh, problem. But they, they will take time if it's uh, the mail server because in current web interface, it's just red and red. They don't know what is the most important. With this web interface, they can know that the, uh, the, the mail server is top and the toner problem can wait the, uh, the next day. That's why for you, your boss and I mean, but we already talked about it. No. 
Here is a, a sample case. We've got two, two, two buildings. The first one, you've got your room one, and in the second, the room, uh, server room two. In the first one, you put your web server and web servers, and in the second, your database ones. Okay, it's stupid, but it's, it's an example. If you've got your important server, like the website of your company, it will use both a database and a website and the Apache server. If you got a problem, a network problem that the uh, building number two is without connection. With nowadays web interface, you will see a lot of wet things like printers, database, switch, service lot of elements in the same element, in, in the same page. You, no one need to get all of this. The, uh, a boss will just want to see the website is done because the switch is dead. And an admin will want the switch is dead and the boss won't be happy. So this is the view for the for the, the boss. They will only see end users applications sorted by business impact. And if there is a problem, they will know the root problems and the whole dependency trees. Here you can got business rules, dependencies other dependencies like in ESX server or network dependencies, it will all will be print here in V3. It's just links. The administrator just want to see the switch is dead. That all. That all we got. So the they see there is one problem, yes, one problem. And if they want to know, oh, one problem with big impacts, so in the top of the page. And if they want to know why is this so important, they can show, they can unfold and show all the impacts. And of course, here, here it's still sorted, so they, they will know that the website is done. So they know that they need to fix it very, very quickly. Uh, in old interfaces, uh, a night shift operator at 4 o'clock would see red, red, red. And if he's a uh, not so talented night shift operator, he probably will go to building two and look at the printer while the, the company website is still down. Mm -hmm. So here, it's even for a help for stupid people showing them this has to be fixed immediately and not uh, other things. Yes, even your boss will understand this. If you ask for details for uh, uh, problems, you will get, again, all its impacts here. Um, If you look at an impact, like here, your, your website, you won't see the impact, there is not it's an impact. So you will see the dependency trees. So you can see what is the, the root problems. The, the tree is automatically unfold until it found the root problem. So you don't even have to unfold it at, uh, at hand. It will do it automatically for you. There is a view that can be used by boss and administrators. They are graphed. <coughs> In graph, like um, an old status one, old map, status map, 
In the old status map, you only got network relations, only host and network partners. But now you've got nearly ESX everywhere, so host dependencies are also important. Business rules, links are also important. Service dependencies too. So, and there was another problem. If you, for a, a little demo environment, it was great, <coughs> ten, 10 elements, great, great. But in the real world with 300 server, it was a nightmare. It was just impossible to, to read it. We tried to get uh, a graph system that will uh, show you only what you want to see, the impacts, the important impacts, and the root problems. And we try to show you the dependency tree in color in red, yeah. The important impacts and important <coughs> root problems are big, mm, big icons. So you can't miss them. Even your boss will see it. And other elements that are not important are not print. If you focus in uh, another point, point of view, that near this element, this one will be shown and other will be hide. So you can still get uh, uh, near the center precise information and in the distant level, it's just what you want to see. So it, even with a big infrastructure, it's still usable. Hmm? Uh, back? <coughs> ah. <laughs> this is uh, my uh, new tablet, <coughs> and I want to acknowledge. That's hard. You have uh, Most uh, gestures. more than gestures, gestures for your mobile devices. So, if you want to test it, go for it. There is the demo web server with this <coughs> installation in, uh, in this address. So, we said that the UE is with uh, um, module systems. So, uh, the, the first one we, we wrote was the PNP one. But <coughs> if you got another uh, graph systems, it's very, very easy to get it in this web interface. And like Shinken, it's in Python, so it's very, very quick to get something works. <coughs> I don't tell you everything about the huge performance of Shinken at the beginning. I said that the Nagios sent to engine and Isinga didn't got broker. It's true. Shinken got. In fact, the web UI was active. So the huge performance was with a web interface. So it's a bit little, but 120,000 service here. And the web page is very, very quick to get. It's nearly immediate. There is no database. There is no query. It's direct access to objects in memory. memory. So, if we get back in time, the Shinken project starts as a POC and was nearly forced to be uh, a, a, a own project. But now, we got quite uh, good stuff. The distributed architecture is okay, and it's very, very good. Their performances are very incredible. There is a lot of improvement. I didn't have time to, to say it, like yeah, the notifications ways you can link to your contact, like if you got um, emails the, the work the, uh, every time and SMS 
alerts only the night. You've got one contact and two way of notifications. It's, you've got uh, a lot of Yes, you can change the critical and warning state <coughs> with a walls also. Uh, you can change, you can... Uh, <coughs> oh yes, maintenance, maintenance period. You, uh, uh, we, we so you occurring... Can configure a, a maintenance period uh, all your services for example, can have an attribute called maintenance period. So uh, it goes automatically <coughs> in a downtime uh, every Saturday night or so. So you don't have to schedule your uh, peri uh, periodically, uh, always, uh, ah, your, your downtimes you always have, uh, you don't have to schedule them with a cron or something. Uh, you just uh, have an attribute in, mm -hmm. the, in the configuration. I've got also a uh, lot of improvement for simplify the Negios configurations, like for the service dependencies or escalations. It was a nightmare to, to configure. No, it's very, very easy. Uh, Before. Yeah. Have even uh, something like a for loop in uh, for service configurations. So uh, if you have a switch with 48 ports, uh, you only uh, define uh, it once and put it in a for loop, so it will uh, produce the services for every uh, element in this loop. Mm -hmm. You just need to describe your host with one, ser one service linked to all your switch. If you describe in your switch, I've got uh, ports from 1 to um, 40, 48, and the another one is 1 to 24, and he will, with this, he will auto, auto create all your service with very, very few configurations. You just need to describe, describe your host and to get, you will get all your services very, very efficient. And not only numbers, uh, this could also be used for file systems, for example. Yeah. You have your host, you have a custom macro, uh, slash user, slash op, uh, whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, then you can loop over this list of file systems and it will create a service for each of them. Mm -hmm. So you, the UE is quite young. It's nearly three, three months since the start of the, of the development, but it's quite good for visualization. visualization. The project, at the beginning, the project was focused on replacing the Nature score. Okay, we got all we got, we got, and even more. Now we are getting the, the step further. We go from the pure tools point of view, because, and we go to a world solutions with uh, the web interface, uh, maybe one day configuration ones, and something like that to to get to to help beginners to.